We're here at the 22nd Croy. I'm Fred Scheich with IFARA, and we're here with Carl Diefenbach, who is director of the Division of AIDS and the National Institutes of Allergy and Infectious Diseases. Uh, we appreciate him taking the time to come and break away from this important conference. Uh, but you always have a great perspective on, on what we're seeing and also maybe how to react to some of what we're seeing. Thanks, Fred. Thank you. So, so let's talk here. about the conference to date. And I, I, there's some very significant themes that have emerged already from the conference. Um, in some ways, yesterday was a day all about prevention. And if you think about the history of this conference, it has always been much more about therapy mm -hmm. and therapeutics. But here we're using therapy in a different way. We're using it for prevention. So we had talks on, on the combination of PrEP, pre-exposure prophylaxis, and treatment as prevention uh, from Jared Baden, who really then emphasized how the combination could be incredibly potent. We had talks on better ways of providing PrEP to um, at-risk individuals. And then we had the disappointing result from uh, the FACS 001 trial. But if you think about it as a theme, mm -hmm. we have now, we're discussing at what was traditionally the therapeutics conference, a significant body of prevention research. That is a major step forward um, and represents an overall maturation in the field. Uh, you know, there's no longer the tension of the fight between treatment or prevention. Treatment is prevention. Um, both sides embrace that, um, and there are no two sides anymore. Everybody has a role and responsibility, not just in treating individuals, but also advancing prevention. So that's a, a really important step forward, um, and I, that, that was a major theme in yesterday's meeting. Today we heard from Debbie Burks. Uh, Ambassador uh, Burks is the head of PEPFAR, and she is really taking PEPFAR to uh, a, a new level uh, and, and really helping to advance some of the things that Ambassador Goosby started. And what, um, what Ambassador Burks is doing is taking the E, the emergency, out of PEPFAR. And it's been um, a battle, and it will continue to be a struggle, because really what we have to do is get to sustainability, country ownership. Mm -hmm. She's got a very good plan that she articulated um, very clearly about how to get the most impact for the dollars that we're currently spending. Um, and it's really, it was really gratifying to see and how, um, how specifically they are drilling down in countries almost to the county level to where they should be focusing mm -hmm. the resources. So there's it, this reallocation going on. It's a, it's a, it's a not, so within a country, it's reallocation within a country. So the, she showed data that um, 28% of the sites involved in mother-to-child transmission see 90% of all the events, all the, all the women. And there are a number of places where they haven't had um, a mother involved where we have, have resources sitting. So by redirecting the resources to the, the hot spots, though you ha still have these focal, HIV is still an, uh, an epidemic of, uh, that it has focal places. You have to be able to pick your resources up and move them to target those hot spots so that you can have the most impact. And then what will be required is once a hot spot, think of it as a forest fire. Mm -hmm. You have that little residual ember that can reignite. You gotta be able to be vigilant. So if it reignites, you put your resources there, um, but also be able to monitor and continually monitor um, and evolve and change. Because what we wanna do is be able to snuff out the entire epidemic, not just play whack-a-mole. Mm -hmm. So the, the, when you're talking about treatment as prevention or treatment is prevention, which of course was started, I don't know, started by Julio and- uh, And, and uh, Mike Cohen uh, with O52. And also uh, Pedro Khan. I mean, there was these supports by the, <laughs> the uh, IS folks and so forth. Uh, there's also treatment as prevention for hepatitis C. So, I mean, yes. it's, it's just, there's just- That's another one of the revolutions. Yeah. So Monday night, uh, Monday night we heard from Charlie Rice who, was um, in many ways um, the, the basic researcher behind all of these discoveries, uh, him and his colleagues, to make it so we could identify um, and target these um, viral proteins. But we can start talking about eradication of hepatitis C. And I think that the types of studies that are going on where we're reducing the length of therapy and still getting the sustained uh, virologic suppression 
are phenomenal. And so sort of the next wave is not just dealing with the individual, but going into a community and being able to uh, get people involved in care uh, and deal with their hepatitis C. And if you think about the overarching problem we have in the United States with the continuum of care for HIV positive people, um, and one of the groups that may, that is probably the hardest to reach is the duly infected individual, the um, HIV positive, hep C positive individual. We can now specifically focus our resources on the hepatitis C positive, HIV positive individuals, offer them benefit for engaging in care, cure them of their hepatitis C, and then retain them in care for their HIV in a way that we couldn't offer people benefit before. I think that will go a long way toward improving the health of the individual, the health of the nation, but also really reducing the risk of continued um, spread of HIV. Uh, the CDC had a report out um, at this meeting that 90% of all HIV transmissions occur from people who are not aware of their HIV status. Being able to close that gap and using every tool available, including something like hepatitis C therapy, will be a major, major step forward. How do you feel about the cure? I know that this is a big subject, and, and uh, we had uh, Tony went to the last meeting about the time the Ebola hit. Yes, yes. At the fan. <laughs> yes. That was pretty amazing. Yeah. And he brought us back to reality. Yes. With the fact that the Ebola virus in this country is not should not be alarming. It should be yes. what should be alarming is the flu vaccine. We should get the yes, flu shot. Exactly. And we've had a we've had a fairly significant flu season this year. In addition, we've had this measles outbreak mm -hmm. um, that are significant public health problems. Where, but mm -hmm. it is, it's back to, can we sustain the implementation? Mm -hmm. So let's talk a moment about cure. Um, because I think that one of the, uh, this is a, a new area of research. Uh, we've been talking off and on about persistence and latency for years. But the level of sophistication of the science that is being presented at this meeting is an order of magnitude greater than the last meeting, and each meeting there's an increasing level of, of new information and sophistication that we're seeing. And um, at this meeting, some very new molecules that can lead toward um, stimulation and uh, it almost, it, the data is very preliminary, but it looks like reduction in the measurable, in the reservoir, at some mm -hmm. measurable level, um, is starting to be seen. So mm -hmm. progress is being made, and it's just a matter of, it's like back to the days pre-AZT. Mm -hmm. We had AZT, it was like one drug, people thought it was a miracle. It actually had all these bad side effects because we were using it incorrectly. As we, we are much better at taking new findings, integrating them, and expanding and improving um, as we go along. But I think we'll go through a similar wave um, for a cure like what we did with drug development back in the, uh, in the late 80s and early 1990s mm -hmm. with, a, with a goal towards some time, a la what we had at, at Vancouver with IAS mm -hmm. in 1996 where we talk about the cocktail. The cocktail. Yeah, yeah. And, the, and the, the other thing is, I think we don't know, we had a few people that talked about vaccination at the same time as antiviral. Uh, or, or uh, getting it out of the, 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 uh, the compartments. And, mm -hmm. uh, and I think that's where it's going to go. But I think we also have to think in terms of evaluating things separately first, at least preliminarily, yes. and then quickly moving into yes. combinations. And that, is, that, that is exactly what happened with antiretroviral mm -hmm. therapy. Every, there's a, a path that um, is very well-worn. And I think that um, through the collaboration with industry, with academia, and with regulatory bodies, we can get there in a safe, effective, effective and durable way. And it, it seems as though there, there's this, uh, the collaboratories, there are three of them, and they are in, in themselves quite a collaboration of, of organizations, mm -hmm. and all of which come to these meetings, these yes. academic meetings, which produce data and people say, oh wait, that's, they learn something and they can apply it to their own work, yes. which is why we're here at this conference, not only for peer review, but for learning from each other and sometimes like we've seen hall talk you know produces some great collaboration it really does and it's great that, that we have there are more and more companies mm -hmm. i mean i think that the strength of hiv and it, it's also reflected by what we saw in hepatitis c that when the pharmaceutical industry decides 
but the target is there and are willing to put the resources behind it, great things can happen that are good for, um, for health. Do you feel we haven't, I know a number of companies have stepped out of the arena from HIV, but uh, just stepped into the hepatitis maybe because they couldn't expend resources in too many directions, and maybe the same thing will happen with cure, I don't know. But, you know, there are some of the advocates that also say we're not really putting enough resources into aging issues and so forth. Those are all issues that are, we talked about that uh -huh. was a big thing a few years ago. It was. And it's still inflammation, Yes. you know, begets, you know, more inflammation yes. or challenges otherwise. But that is, I, I think that as we're seeing from um, some of the cohort studies, like, like Kaiser's cohort and um, the VA cohort, this is not a, an issue that is unique mm -hmm. to HIV infection. This is yeah. a, a, something that happens to all us 60 year olds. Right. Um, and it's, it was hard to tell the difference, and, it, it except is, but, when you get out the older, really older. And, age, and then, yeah. but at the same time, earlier therapy seems to make a difference. Mm -hmm. So what we have is a is a, an issue with uh, people who are improperly or incompletely treated mm -hmm. that have um, residual damage. And then as we're, one of the interesting things that is coming out of the CURE symposiums that, and sessions here is just the level of chronic expression that occurs even in the presence of therapy because it's not ongoing replication. Mm -hmm. So the drugs cannot hit that. And so that we are making viral RNA and possibly vir um, HIV proteins that are going to continue to stimulate, but it's not ongoing replication. It's the persistent expression of HIV antigens that we need to figure out. Regardless of whether you're on treatment or not. Regar yes. And that's why the people with the elite controllers or elite viral controllers, whatever, are being treated now because they realize there is something happening. There even is. On but treatment. what we need to do is figure out if there are different therapies that can target that persistently expressing cell that are different than the current drugs we're using. So it's almost like there's also time for a new range and a new, uh, a new realm of drug discovery to, to focus in on, on some new targets. Mm -hmm. Well, you've really covered it quite well. I don't know if there's anything else you want to bring up before we, we part, but... Um... Do, one other thing, I mean, coming back to this prevention theme, is mm -hmm. that uh, lost, and hopefully not lost in all this, was the result that came out also Monday uh, from the PROMISE study, mm -hmm. where essentially what we have done is um, take um, women, put them on therapy during their pregnancies, and then look at very early after birth what the level of, of acquisition by their infants were during, the, during the, the birth process. And we had anticipated that it would be a reduction, but it was a, it was a profound reduction. It was well under 1% transmission, and the, the two um, heart regimens were essentially equal at a half a percent, essentially. Mm -hmm. So that gets us that much closer to creating an AIDS -free, a true AIDS-free generation from the time of birth. Mm -hmm. We just have to continue to be, then work with PEPFAR and work with the Global Fund to be able to fully implement option B plus as time goes on. I'm gonna have a separate panel on um Pediatric AIDS with uh, Lynn Moffinson. Terrific. So uh, I'm sure she'll bring that up and so I'm forth sure and she cover will. it in more detail as, as well. So we can tune into that one. Terrific. Thank you very much, Carl. I appreciate it. It's always it. a pleasure. It's always a pleasure from my part, too, for sure.